Hi everyone, I'm Nupur. I am an image consultant, stylist and founder of fashion blog The Crispy Corner. And today we have someone very special with us. We have Farah, who is a stunning makeup artist and we're going to get to know her more. So Farah, tell us, I, I mean I know you are a makeup artist, but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you become a makeup artist? I am a makeup artist. Um, so it was like, it was a long messy journey. Still on the journey, haven't got there yet. Um, but I did, like, I've tried a lot of things, so I studied graphics animation and then I switched my major in university and I ended up with a BA in business administration, which, I mean, I love, I love That's business. a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I took some courses in media, I wanted to be a news anchor, believe it or not, and I've done, like, some fashion, uh, modest fashion modeling and stuff like that, but I've always loved makeup. I've always, always loved makeup, so I grew up in a house with four sisters, and I have my mom, and then just like, um, just growing up with girls, you always have a party, you always have something going on. But the funny part is, I was kind of, I mean, you could say I was kind of a tomboy, I never really wore makeup, although I would play around a lot with it, like my sisters and I like, would do looks and stuff, but I never really wore makeup out. Um, so then I would just like, I started doing makeup, like for my mom, for my sister, when someone has a party, you know what, you're really good at this, like you should do something about it. And then two years ago, it started like because people were encouraging me. They were like, you know what, you're really good at makeup. And there's one thing about your passion. When you're, If you're a kind of person that you're like always lost and you don't really know what you want, because this is something I struggled with a lot, which is like, what do I want? Like, where do I, what is my passion? I think that's the question we all struggle with. Yeah, but you know what, who's the most people that can help you with this? is like sometimes you try to find your passion and you just get so lost and it gives you a lot of anxiety. The people around you are the best people who can tell you what you're passionate about because they see the smile on your face when you do something that you don't see. So like, I remember, like my husband, one of my greatest supporters, like he would be like, you don't see the smile on your face when you go to a makeup store. Like that is your passion. So people can see your facial expression. They can see what makes you happy more than you can see it yourself. So I got a lot of encouragement. And they were like, try doing this on your own and like, why not do makeup? And I was like, you know what, why not? So I just started a little thing. This was back in Jordan. I'm at Jordan. So I started a, a little page and I would do some, you know, had my little makeup kit, started building my kit, and just started going to people's houses, doing their makeup. Do you need a lot of money to start off? Being a makeup artist, I mean, you, you, like, a lot of people, like, when a makeup artist charges a certain amount, they're like, that's a lot. But you don't understand how much, how much stuff she needs to buy, like, for each client. Uh, but you don't need a lot of makeup stuff. A good makeup artist is a makeup artist that can work with a, just any tools and make it work. You can have four colors in your kit and make it work. That means you're a good makeup artist. So I started out with a very basic kit. Most of like just, just you know, no, like drugstore stuff, things like I've collected. Um, and then like by building my kit, like most of my, like everybody knows I love makeup. So every birthday, every graduation, every event, people would give me makeup, makeup. for my as gifts. My gifts were always so I use that to build my kit. So you build it over time, and then you start like replacing the you know like some cheap stuff. You start replacing the more nicer stuff, and then you know building your brush collection. And all. Interesting. Okay. So so what brought you to San Francisco though? So I moved here with my husband. He's a VC, and then this is just a great place because. Like there's so many creative people, and I get to meet people like hey. Nabor, and uh, just like a lot of creative minds, especially when it comes to styling and makeup. There are no limits here. Farah, um, we see so many makeup artists nowadays on YouTube and Instagram, and people who don't even have a profile, but they call themselves makeup artists. Yeah. So for people like us who are looking for a genuine makeup artist, how do we find them? Yeah, and that's true, and this is not just made it hard for clients to find a trustworthy makeup. It's also made it hard for makeup artists because every other person out there is calling themselves a makeup artist. And I mean, everyone has everyone has the equal and fair chance to try um, to do it, but it takes so much work and so much effort. So even, it, it's, it's not easy because there's a lot of competition. And I think, um, you can call yourself a makeup artist, but it's really your work that proves it. If you're looking for a makeup artist, always check their portfolio out. I think that's very important. That's see true. their work, see their reviews. And then what try. Like you, you have to tr actually try someone. And then once you try them, if they're good, you're going to recommend them to their friend. The friend's going to recommend it to their cousin, to their sister. And then that's just how they'll, they'll build a client base. And that's how you'll know someone's trustworthy. 
Great, so we've known a little bit about Farah. we'll get to know more about her. But let's ask her some beauty tips and makeup tips that I'm sure will be very helpful to all of you. <laughs> so I don't need my phone for that because I have so many questions for her. So Farah, tell us, what is your typical makeup or beauty routine in the morning? So you, do you get up with foundation or do you clean your face? Like, what, what's the routine, typical routine for you? Mm. So I don't look like this every day, you guys. But like today, I went all out, just because I wanted to check my skin for But no, seriously, like for, for every day, <laughs> for every day, I don't like put foundation or false lashes. I, I save those like for special occasions or special events. On a day-to-day -day basis, my makeup actually just takes me like 10 minutes. On a day-to-day -day basis, in the morning, I just cleanse um, my face and then um, sunscreen, because that's what you should always do, right? And then um, BB cream is what I use. Always some bronzer, add some color, mascara. I can never, okay, my two things I can never leave the house without, mascara and concealer. I can't leave the house without concealer, yeah. So basically, yeah, that's like my, my daily routine. That's great, is there a particular BB cream that you would recommend for coverage, I, coverage, healthy one? Okay, so I, I should do a video about this, guys. I've tried every single should. BB cream out there. Like I think I've tried like seven or something. Um, I always keep going back to Garnier. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite moisturizer <laughs> for your beauty routine? So right now, I'm, I've tried a couple of things, but right now I'm giving the Cuddly a try. And I like it because I'm trying to go more natural, and they use like a lot of grapeseed oil and stuff like that. Oh, nice. So I use grapeseed oil, I love it. Yeah. I use it before I sleep. Oh, wow. Apparently it has anti-aging properties. Do you use like raw grapeseed oil? I use it, I mix it with a bit of aloe vera and then apply it on my skin before I sleep. Hydrating. Yeah instead of using a moisturizer. That's nice. So, you know, we go out so often and uh, because of that we end up putting makeup on a daily basis. I know a lot of people put it to even work every single day. So in that kind of situation, how do we take care of our skin? Because sometimes it can get very, it can make your skin dull with a long period of usage. Yeah. So how do you take care of a skin for someone who's using makeup quite often? So first of all, if you are wearing makeup every day, you want to know what you're putting on your face. So like read the labels and make sure you're using good makeup because this is something you're putting on your face every day. Don't use whatever is, is there. Like just like be picky about your makeup. Know what you're putting on your face. And I actually worked a job where I had to put on full makeup every single day, like full makeup foundation and everything. And the thing that I would try to do and I would recommend for people who do wear makeup every day is give yourself one day a week, just give your face a break, give your skin a break, let it breathe, don't put a single thing on it. So like one day on the weekend where you don't have to go out or anything. Just don't put anything on your on your face. Give it just some time, at least once a week, without any makeup. I think everyone can do once once a week. And then always just like cleanse it a lot because if you put putting on makeup, especially in the summer, your pores open, the foundation is going to sink into the pores. So you just really always want to make sure that um, you use like good cleansers, things that are going to kill any bacteria in your skin, and then always. Um, use detoxifying masks and exfoliate all the time exfoliate. Okay, fair. So tell us, um, what do you think is the one makeup faux pas people are making nowadays? Using the wrong color foundation. Oh, I agree with that you one. You guys, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't try to get a foundation darker because you want to look tan. Don't try to get a lighter foundation. Get a foundation that matches your skin color. I agree. I agree. I mean, I meet a lot of clients who come for image consulting and they don't know their color. So you'd rather not buy a foundation than buy a foundation, which is wrong. Yeah. And the other thing, like, I think like your face is a base. So if you have that wrong, no matter how gorgeous your eyes are, how luscious your lips look, if your foundation is looking wrong, it just ruins all makeup. Sometimes people buy the foundation and make them look like a ghost. Like there's so much. Yeah. So when it comes to skin, there's your the sh your shade and your tone. Right. So if you're if you're if you're matching your tone, not your shade, your tone, then you can kind of play around with um, the shade. So if you do want it a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, you can do that. You can play around with the shade as long as you get the tone right. Because if you get the tone wrong, then you end up looking gray or yellow or purple or I don't know. Yeah, I agree. With that. <laughs> the last question I will ask you, and then we will move to the rapid fire, is for people with sensitive skin. What kind of makeup removal would you recommend? I know a lot of people tend to do a lot of eye makeup and it's so difficult to remove makeup mm -hmm. from the eye and you know you tend to use a lot of makeup removal which is sometimes very harsh to remove it. Well, 
Mostly for people with sensitive skin, again, you want to check the ingredients, check with your dermatologist, but make sure always get things that are fragrance free. The less chemicals, the better. And even, you could just grab something from your kitchen, like coconut oil, olive oil, and that's really going to dissolve your makeup, especially if you're in the shower and then you've got the steam and the oil, and that would really melt all your makeup off. Also, there's also natural things like rose water. That's great for soothing irritated and sensitive skin. It's a great toner. So yeah. If you want to prevent wrinkles, all this toner is going to Does it prevent wrinkles? It does, it does. So it's a natural toner and yeah. it works great for the skin. Like I've been using it for years now. Yeah. So let's go to the rapid fire round now. Okay, so we're going to ask Farah some questions and she has no time to think. She just has to answer it on the spot. <laughs> What's your favorite foundation? Crayon. Okay, Crayon. Okay, <laughs> strobing or bronzing? Bronzing. Okay, foundation or BB cream? BB cream. Favorite makeup artist? Fit at the time. One person you would like to do makeup on? Um, the whole Eyes on the cast. Okay, not one, the whole. She yeah, wants to do it for cast. everyone. Of Eyes on Who is your role model? My mom. If you met my mom, you'd know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have soft spots for mom. Yeah. And dad. <laughs> I have my dad, so. Of course. Um, what's your favorite shade of red? My favorite, like that, like badass vampire red. Mm. Yeah. Is that from Kat Von D's? They have a vampire shade. Yeah, I love Kat Von D's. And any red that's like that dark red, like mm. a more burgundy, like more on the burgundy black side. Right, yeah, right. That's my dark side. And I want to know what's the lipstick shade you're wearing now? I really like <laughs> So actually, this is mostly a lip liner. You can use a lip, if you find a lip liner you like, just use that and fill in your whole lips. It will it's pretty new and, and the best part about it is you can wear it on a daily basis, this shade, Yeah, right? so this is like my everyday shade. This is a lip liner from Gosh. The color is Antique Rose. So like my go-to color is like an antique-ish rose color. And I feel like this color suits every skin tone. Yeah, it looks good on everyone. I love it. I'm and it's neutral. It. it will match anything you want to wear. Initially, I was asking Farah that I don't think I can pull it off because I think she's on the cooler side and I'm more warm. But, but she's like everywhere. Bro, you pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a word for that. <laughs> so with that, we end this video and we're going to ask Farah where we can find her. So if you want to look her up or you need makeup tips, tell us about it. Okay, so I am rebrand. I am like rebranding. I have a website that will be up probably by the end of this week. It's Spirit Makeup. So my new brand is all under the name of Spirit Makeup. Um, just because, like yeah, because like it's like you know, makeup can really lift your spirit, and it's not just about the outer beauty. It's about the inner beauty as well. Oh, that's the reason why you chose Spirit. Spirit Makeup. Yeah. Also, my Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, everything is under Spirit Makeup. Perfect. So we're going to share our links below. You can find Farah's and my social media links below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. channel so you can see more videos of us. Absolutely.